D-153, penetration testing and vulnerability analysis, is done. I mean, technically, it's going to take WGU a couple of days to officially get the results, but I took the Pen Test Plus exam today and I passed. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. I'm going for my bachelor's degree in cybersecurity and information assurance at a college called Western Governors University. And one of the classes that you have to take is the penetration testing class. And in order to pass the class, you must pass the CompTIA Pen Test Plus exam. And so what I will do is I will talk about the Pen Test Plus first, uh, kind of give some information on it, things I used, what I thought about the test, things like that. And then I'll kind of wrap it all up, talking a little bit about you know what that means for me as far as WGU goes, and then what, what's next from there. You might think that because my career is in information security, this would be an easy exam, but no, it wasn't an easy exam at all. You see, my career really focuses in, well, mainly GRC at this point. So governance, risk, and compliance. It's not a super technical thing. I, I am technical here and there, but like offensive penetration testing and ethical hacking is not a part of my career. It is something that the whole reason why I even got into security is because I wanted to be a pen tester. My, my career didn't go in that direction. But yeah, this, this was a very, very difficult exam. It was a lot harder than I expected it to be. And it wasn't really as fun as I thought it would be either. I was originally really excited to do this particular course because it's, it's penetration testing. And I really was, was prepared to be hands-on. I was super excited to get in there. But the problem was is that I didn't really consider the fact that, yes, it is pen testing, but it's also a CompTIA exam. And CompTIA exams are not hands-on like that. So this particular exam, just like most of the CompTIA exams, you'll have a few simulation questions in the beginning. And then after that, it's just mainly multiple choice. Now, I just want to pause for a second and give you a bit of context here, because when I tell you that it wasn't really what I expected, I've only ever taken one other like penetration testing exam, and it, it was a, an entry level one, but it was called the EJPT, which stands for eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester. And this exam was by far the most fun exam I've ever had in my life. I've never gone into an exam really excited, but I was super excited when I took that exam. Now, I took it back in 2019, but if I remember correctly, you basically, it gave you a scope of what it wanted you to do, and then you had three days to just go at it. So you would just uh, log into VPN and you would literally just pen test their network. And what I did was I sat down and for 11 hours straight, I was just pen testing their network. Like it's it's 100% practical and it was so much fun. Like I just enjoyed it and I loved it. And that's originally what I was thinking that the, the CompTIA Pen Test Plus would be. But again, CompTIA is not like that at all. CompTIA is very much a, you get a few simulations and then it's all questions and answers type of test. The first resource that I used to pass this exam, and, and really the one that I would recommend you guys do, if you're at WGU, this isn't included in your tuition, but you can get a discount because you're a student. Uh, but the first thing that I recommend is that you use something called Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me, uh, it allows you to, they basically teach you pen testing, but they are practical as well. So you get a chance to, um, if you if you have their premium subscription, you can actually use like Kali Linux inside of the browser. They'll give you their, you know, your own session you can get into. Uh, personally, I thought it was kind of slow. So I just, you know, used a, an old computer that I had in the house, put Kali on there, and I just used OpenVPN to VPN into their network that way. But the, the point is, is that you will get some hands-on experience and it teaches you a lot of things. It'll teach you Nmap, it'll teach you Burp Suite, it'll teach you uh, a lot of the tools that are actually listed inside of the, um, the objectives for the CompTIA Pen Test Plus. And it's probably the best way that you're gonna be able to get some hands-on experience. Do I feel like you can pass by just using TryHackMe? Absolutely not. I don't think you'll stand a chance, but I do think that TryHackMe is a really good resource to use regardless. Another resource that I used was Jason Dion's Udemy course. It's pretty good. Um, it's like, I think it's like 32 hours or something like that. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched the majority of it. And I found his, the, the way that he breaks down a lot of concepts, I think is really nice. He then goes on a lot of times to actually show you what the tool looks like on his end. So if you want to, you could kind of use him and try hack me a little bit together. Uh, but yeah, I, I learn first by, you know, being hands-on, but sometimes you can't always be hands-on. Second would really be by videos. And I think his videos were great. Uh, again, do I think you can pass just using his videos? Mm, I don't think so. And from what I've read on a lot of like Reddit posts and things like that, a lot of people don't think so either, but it's still a good resource and I, I liked it. 
The resource that I actually use the most was CompTIA's official stuff. There is a website. They have uh, the CompTIA Cert Master Practice thing, and um, yeah, basically there's there's they break it all down into twenty different lessons. So you have twenty lessons, and then they teach the information. There's practice tests that you can do. There's like full assessments you can do, and um, I really use that. And it's not because I thought it was great resources. I mainly use that because that was their official material, and I figured that it was it would be best. To try to get inside of their mindset because what i was hearing was that you know a lot of times they they you know recommend certain tools or have certain tools that they feel like is best whereas like people who have actually been in the pen testing world for a long time they don't necessarily agree but it doesn't matter if you agree or not you're taking a comtia pen test exam so you have to really think and and get into the way that comtia looks at it and use the tools that comtia says to use because that's what you're going to be tested on and because i knew that i was like okay i really need to focus mainly on what they say is the right answer because that's what i'm going to be tested on the CompTIA Cert Master like practice thing also has a little section for PBQs, which is, uh, what does PBQ stand for? Uh, Performance-based questions. So those are kind of the simulations that you'll, you'll end up having to do. And I, I really am glad that they had those because, you know, while it's of course not the exact simulations, it does kind of give you an idea if you haven't taken CompTIA exams in a while. It, it gives you the idea of what those type of performance-based questions will, how they'll work, not really what the questions are, but it, it lets you know how it works. Um, and so that was okay. Again, it's not like full hands-on. I wasn't expecting it to be. And that's really what I feel like I need going forward. But for the exam, it, it was enough. If you're wondering how long I studied for, um, I mean, I put in multiple, multiple hours every day. Uh, it's basically, I think it was 10 days straight, 10 or 11 days straight of just studying. When I was working, I would do my job, you know, do what I got to do. But as soon as I got off of work, I spent the rest of the day studying. On the weekends, I studied all day from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Uh, I pretty much stopped playing video games completely so I could study uh, instead of watching just like random TV shows or something like that or, or Netflix or Hulu. I literally cut all of that out and I just watch Jason Dion's videos instead. I even went to bed watching Jason Dion's videos. Like I was so damn focused and dedicated on trying to get this done because I knew it was going to be difficult. But yeah, I literally had to change everything, change my whole plan on how I was going to approach this exam because I really, really needed to focus because I knew it was a lot of information and I, I wasn't feeling super comfortable that I was going to pass on the first try. And so far in my kind of WGU you know, journey or whatever, I, I haven't failed anything yet. So I really, really wanted to get this done. I'll tell you what my actual results was in a second, but I do want to say that this is the first time I've, I've, I've ever taken a CompTIA exam at home. I've never used Pearson VUE's uh, like online thing before. If I ever have taken an exam from CompTIA, I always went to a testing center. But this time I decided I'd really rather just take it at home if possible. And so I did. I took it right here in this room. Uh, the problem though was that I tried to schedule this on Thursday and I just assumed that they would have completely open availability and they did not at all. They had availability on Sunday, which is today. They had availability at like 2, 3 a.m. And then they didn't have any more availability until like 5 p.m. And 5 p.m. would have been way, way too late for me to take an exam. Reason why is because everybody in the neighborhood is awake at 5 p.m. People are always blasting their music. They're super, super loud. And I was pretty convinced that if I would have taken an exam that late, CompTIA probably would have heard something in the background, assumed that I was cheated and would have canceled the test. So I was really, really, really nervous. What I actually ended up doing was I scheduled the exam for Sunday at 5 p.m. And then um, yesterday, I decided to see if I could just reschedule it. And so I went to reschedule it and it successfully allowed me to reschedule. And when I went to reschedule, it had a bunch of availability for today. I was like, okay, that's really weird. Maybe a bunch of people canceled, I don't know, but it had the availability that I wanted. And so I ended up taking the exam this morning at 9 a.m. Outside of the main scheduling, it was a little bit weird because what I had to do was I actually had to use my phone to take a picture of the front of the testing environment, the back, the left, and the right. And that was just something a little bit different um, than, what I've, than what I've been doing with WGU. And then also, they didn't actually like talk to me at all. I, I didn't hear the voice of the proctor. I didn't see the proctor. Basically, what they did was 
Well, they didn't initially say anything. The test popped up on the screen and I guess I was supposed to just take it, but I clicked the button to, to chat with them. Took them a few moments for them to join. When they finally joined, I asked them like, hey, am I good to start? Is there anything else? Because I was like 15 minutes early and they was like, yeah, you can just go ahead and start. So I started the exam. I pride myself on being honest with you guys, whether I am doing well or I'm struggling. So to be honest with you here, this exam, yeah, I passed. You're supposed to get at least a 750. I think I got 756, so it's not like I passed by a whole lot. And to be honest with you, I thought I failed. I, I do the same thing with CompTIA exams, all of the ones I've taken in the past. So I'd recommend you do this as well, which is that you can always flag a question and come back to it later. And they usually put the performance-based questions in the very front. So what I would recommend that you do is just wait, do all of the other questions first, and then go back to the simulation questions. This way you have more time and, and you're, you're able to just manage your time a lot better. And you know, I went through all of the questions and everything was fine. And then I went back to do those simulation questions questions and that's when I just like mentally fell apart. I don't know if I can tell you exactly how many simulation questions I had, so I won't hear, but I will say that most of the simulation questions were difficult, but it was the last one that I did that I just, I, I pretty much had just hit my, my breaking point mentally. Um, I was literally sitting there and it was just, it was so many things and, and I was looking at it and I was like, I, I, I don't know the answer. I do not know the answer. There was an entire simulation question that had a ton of different options that I needed to, to do and I did not know the answer for any of it. I was just sitting there staring at it and I was like, there's no way. There's so many options inside of the simulation question i was like i'm gonna get marked wrong for a bunch of them now now to be honest with you we don't actually know if the simulation question gives partial credit or if it's just like one big credit in itself but it's probably partial credit for each question that you get right and i just assumed i was going to get them all wrong i i probably sat just doing that one simulation question for like 30 minutes trying my best to keep telling myself like look take it one item at a time but all the items were kind of related and i was just like I, I don't know i don't know the answer to this i genuinely don't know the answer to this and so um you know after about 30 minutes of me just kind of sitting there and trying to try my best to to figure it out i ultimately just you know i i put what i could and then i hit you know i hit end to end the exam and yeah, I, I thought that I failed. And CompTIA, unfortunately, whenever you finish the exam, you know, they like to ask a lot of questions afterwards. These aren't like scored questions. They're just like survey questions, but there's a ton of survey questions. And so I'm just sitting there um, answering these questions, just feeling in the back of my mind, like, oh my God, can I just get to the end already? Just show me the score. Just show me I failed. And, and you know, I have to figure out what I'm going to do. And then I finally got to the end and I mean, I, I just, I, I was holding my head in shame. Like I just knew that I was going to have to do this again, but I looked up, I looked at it and the words congratulations was there. And I, and I looked at it for a second. Um, I didn't even look at the score. I just looked at it and I was like, did I really pass? Is it, is it possible? And then I looked up and sure enough, I got 756 out of 750 and I just, I kind of stood there in disbelief, well, sat here in disbelief, because I was just like, I, I was just shocked and amazed that I had actually passed this exam. And so, yeah, it's over. It's done. This particular certification is done. And, and that is the end of this class as well, for the most part. And so I, I got the results. I got the printout. It does say that I passed. That's wonderful. But what happens is it should take a couple of days for it to actually get to WGU. WGU needs to get it, acknowledge it, accept it, and then it will show that this particular class is passed. And then, then we can move on. So of course, what's next? To be honest with you, I don't know what's next. I really don't. Uh, the thing is, is that, yeah, the, the class still needs to be acknowledged, but that was the last class in my degree. There are no classes left. It's done. So I have additional questions. I want to know, you know, does the degree, when I finally get it, does it show today as the final day? I don't know. Um, so I, I can tell you that it's my understanding WGU is going to need to get the results of the test, which could take a couple days. Then my program mentor, I think she has to actually submit me for graduation or something like that. And then WGU has to go through and approve it. And um, I've already paid. I paid uh, all of the rest of the tuition earlier this week and kind of, you know, early preparation for me potentially passing today. So 
yeah, I mean, there's really nothing for me to do. At this point, it's kind of just waiting. I will probably make another video soon and let you guys know exactly what is required because I know that, you know, there may be some paperwork or some other things that need to be filled out, but I'm done. The degree is over with for the most part. There's nothing else for me to do. There's no more classes for me to take. I just need to wait. So yeah, I am super excited. If you guys are curious, I started, uh, I started January 1st. Today is February 12th. So that's what, 40, 43 days? I think it took 43 days for me to finish all of the classes. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited to be honest with you. But yeah, I guess that's it. I haven't taken a break at all since I started. So um, it, it would be nice to just finally be able to take a break, no more classes that I need to do or anything like that. So yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take the next couple of days to kind of relax. What well, I do need to update my resume, I guess. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna relax for a couple of days. I will give you guys an update once I get it, once I know what's, what's uh, supposed to happen next. But until my next video, you guys take care.